Well, good morning, everybody. Let's stand up. Let's worship together. It says, we bring our praise. You bring revival.
the waves crashing over every day. God of mercy, please come rescue me. I am longing for your voice, gentle whisper in the noise. Father, tell Isn't it amazing that in the name of Jesus, we can find freedom and we can have great breakthrough. Good morning, Velocity Church. Great to see you this morning. If you are a first-time guest, 
a first-time attender, uh, you are our guest, and we'd love to connect with you. So uh, if you haven't already, drop by Connect Central. Connect Central right outside these uh, doors to my left, your right. Uh, my wife's actually out there uh, uh, this morning, Crystal, and she'd love to see you and uh, connect with you. I'll be out there later on along with Pastor Reggie, and we'd love to uh, connect with you and uh, just say hello, and you are uh, so welcome to be here at Velocity. We are so thankful for you and so thankful for this time that we can come together. We can come together and join hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, and worship uh, our King of all kings. So we're so thankful that you're with us. Just a couple announcements. Uh, I do want to remind you that tonight uh, we go with round two, session two of the Keys to Financial Freedom tonight at 6 p.m. in the Worship Center. Uh, if you did, uh, were not able to attend the first session, no worries. We're going to do a little recap at the beginning, and we'll continue with the second session. So everyone is welcome uh, to attend tonight, Keys to Financial Freedom, uh, round number two, 6 p.m. Uh, this evening. Then I want to let you know uh, on Wednesday of this week, Wednesday of this week at 6.30, at 6.30 in the Worship Center, we're going to start off our Keys to the Bible. We're going to start from Re uh, we're going to start from Genesis and move our way all the way through Revelations. So we're going to do a, a, a timeline on the Bible. So Keys to the Bible starts this Wednesday at 6.30, and you're all welcome to attend uh, that uh, workshop. I do want to let you know as well, a little teaser, students are coming. Students are coming September the 2nd. September the 2nd, we're going to open up September with students on Wednesday night, middle school uh, youth. Uh, we'll get together at 630, and we have a lot of new things that will be uh, coming out in September uh, with Velocity Church, so we're very excited uh, to uh, share those with you. Uh, and as we get closer, uh, we'll let those uh, come out. But you're uh, just kind of keep that on your calendar, students coming in September. Uh, timber. Our giving boxes are throughout our campus, so feel free to uh, give any tithe or offering. If you have a prayer uh, comment card or a prayer uh, request, our prayer team meets on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. right here in the Worship Center. You're welcome to be a part of that, but please know that our prayer team prays for this church body and prays for you individually. So if you uh, would like to put down a detailed prayer request, it's their honor to pray in detail for you. Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. And so, Almighty God, and may we communicate with our King and lay our concerns and lay our celebration moments, our, our, our problems, our issues, our struggles, our triumphs, whatever we have, may we continue to lay them at the Lord Jesus Christ's feet through prayer, uh, through prayer. And our prayer team, uh, they get together on Tuesday at 7 p.m. We're going to continue our worship. I'm going to pray for us. Uh, you can stay seated for a little bit, and then uh, Daniel will uh, raise you up, and we'll continue to, to pray for, to the King of all continue to worship to the uh, King of all kings. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that when we are weak, you are strong. And all you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, for you are El Shaddai, our fully dependable provider, so great and so faithful. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for these moments. We thank you for allowing us to come together this morning So we lay these times at your feet. We lay this time at your feet. And we pray that everything that's said and done would glorify you, Almighty God, in your wonderful name. Amen. Stand and worship together again. The song says, you are who you say you are. You'll do what you say you'll do. You'll be who you've always been to us. Let's sing it up. You are who you say you are. You'll do what you say you'll do. You'll be who you've always been to us. Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus, you are unfailing. Our God, our God, through the wilderness, our joy. promise you've ever made to us as we hear about in your word and we read about in your scripture. Lord, we know that you are unfailing. There is no battle that you've ever fought that you have come out losing. Even on the cross, your longer game plan was to raise again from the dead so that we too might walk in new life again. God, we know that when you speak, mountains move you speak, the darkness trembles. Jesus, you can do anything you want to do. So in this place, in the same way, in the beginning of the world, God, when you spoke everything into motion, for these next few minutes as we sing to you, God, I pray that we not just give you lip service this morning, God, but we sing with an expectation that when we sing, Lord, that when you speak to us, the mountain that stands in front of us moves out of the way.
cannot be overcome. There's power in the name of Jesus. In fact, the darkness trembles at the name of Jesus. 
I was just so excited and encouraged just seeing the words of that song and, and us able to sing, us able to give God praise. That's what I've been teaching on this week. Fear has nothing on Jesus. Fear likes to come and try to paralyze us. Fear has nothing on Jesus. The name of Jesus will not be overcome. So when it talks about the darkness trembles, that's the truth. The darkness trembles at the name of Jesus. So I don't know what you got going on in your life, but you need to come to Jesus because he's the way, the truth, and the life, and he's the answer. I'm telling you, man, that song speaks it, and I know they're going to sing it again because I'm so excited. And when you sing it, I want you to sing it with them. Let's praise God together. There's nothing that will overcome the name of Jesus. Nothing. He is the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the great I am. He knows everything about your life. And get this, he loves you more than you can ever imagine. Jesus is here today, and Jesus wants to change lives. I had the privilege of seeing several kids get saved this week. Man, you're talking about, I'm jacked up for Jesus today, okay? Yeah. Yeah, and I believe... I believe there's some folks here that your lives going to be changed today. I believe some of those folks, I'm going to welcome them watching with us today and listen to us online. There's going to be some lives that are changed today, but we got to get God's Word in us, and we have to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior because there's nothing that will overcome His name. So as these words are, are played and as they sing, sing, man. Let's sing it out to God. Let's give Him praise because He is worthy of our praise, isn't He? Let's do it in Jesus' name. Your name. Let's do it. Your name is love. That the shadows can't deny And your name cannot be inhabits the praises of his people. God loves us to praise him. He wants us to praise him. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life, good, bad, ugly, great. God says praise him. Give him glory. Give him honor. May he be glorified in everything we do today. Whew. I know you're excited. It's going to be hard to sit down, but you may be seated. You may be seated. You know, last week we started We are so, let me say this. We are so blessed, aren't we? We're living. We're breathing. We're able to move. I mean, we have so many blessings. We're still in the series Blessing. You know, last week we talked about Let It Go. Hope you've been letting it go. I'm not talking about Elsa and Disney either. I'm talking about letting it go to God because he's the king. We talked about sowing and reaping, and we talked about when you plant, you want to plant much seed, and you'll reap much seed. If you plant little, little, you'll reap little. So God wants us to let it go. Let it go to him. Give back to him the things that are, that are his and even more. And watch what happens and watch the big harvest. I believe God wants every one of us to have a bountiful harvest. 
So if you would, bow your heads, close your eyes. Let's talk to God. Ask him to give you what you need. Father, we just want to say thank you for being here with us. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care about us. Thank you that you are here today. The name of Jesus, we lift up the name of Jesus, God. We lift you up. We give you praise. We thank you for lives that are being changed now, lives that are, good, lives that are going to be changed hearing your word. May we receive it. Open our hearts and minds to you, to you. God, put a shield of faith up here that, that, that people may receive exactly what you have for them. We give you thanks and praise. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. Amen. So today I've titled the message, From Begging to Blessing. From Begging to Blessing. There was a little boy who went with his mom to the local store who was owned by a kind man. And they went and got their stuff, and then they got up to, to go check out. And the owner, the owner slid the candy jar over to the little boy. And he says, why don't you get you some candy? Grab you some. And the little boy it was uncharacteristic of him to be shy, but he just sort of backed up, and he, and he was a little, little afraid. So then the, the, the owner stuck his hand into the candy jar and gave it to the boy. So then they went outside, and Mom's talking to the little boy. She said, why were you so shy, and you wouldn't take a handful of that candy when you were offered the candy? And the boy replied, because his hand is so much bigger than mine, Mama. His hand is so much bigger than mine. And here's what I go to what I'm talking about today. God's hand is so much bigger than our hand. Woo, I want his blessings. Not what Reggie tries to come up with, not what we try to come up with our own on our own and, and make our own kind of deal. No, his hand is so much bigger than your hand. His hand is so much bigger than my hand, and I want everything God wants for me. Do you agree on that? Everything God wants for you in Jesus' name. So I'm going to read reading to you a lot today. You're going to get a lot of scripture today. Okay, so I want you to, I'm going to read fast, I want you to listen fast. Can y'all do that with me? A lot of scripture today, but it's amazing. Here's what I know about God's scripture. God's scripture never returns void. It always has some good seed it's going to fall on. Some good soil that it's going to fall on. So I don't know what's happening with you, but I want you, when you get God's word, it will transform your life. And so Deuteronomy chapter 28 is what we're going to be looking at today. We'll also be looking at Ruth chapter 3 as well. But Deuteronomy 28, and, and some of it is so good, I may read it to you twice. Can y'all handle that? And a lot of you are going to like this verse and th this passage here. Deuteronomy 28, starting with verse 3, it says, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall be you be in the country. You might have heard that before. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Then verse 5, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. I don't know how many of you do that now, but blessed shall you be your basket. Okay, and then verse 6, blessed shall you be when you come in, blessed shall you be, I really like this one, when you go out. Blessed shall you be when you come in, blessed shall you be when you go out. Verse 7, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. I really like that one. They shall come out against you one way and they shall scatter, they shall flee seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and an altar which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Woo, that's good stuff. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to read to you from a different version. Now we're going to go to the New Living, Living Translation, and I want you to listen to what it says here. See if this sounds a little, more, a little more modern. It can help you understand maybe a little bit more. It says, your towns and your fields will be blessed. You understand that? Verse 4, your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and your flocks, they will be blessed. The fruit baskets and your breadboards will be blessed. And wherever you go and whatever you do, it will be blessed. I'm liking that. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack from one direction. They will scatter you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouses with grain. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. Man, that sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds really good. So when we read that, we go, man, that's really good stuff. In fact, it's almost too good to be true. So when we read something like that, we go, there's got to be a catch, right? Is there like a catch to all that? got to be a catch. People get excited when we read those, verse, those verses, but if we back, up, we back up to verse 1, we can see that there's a condition that must be met by us before we can, you and I can expect the blessings of God. 
We're blessed just to be alive. But if you want some, some amazing more blessings on your life, let's just back that up a little bit. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 says, Now it shall come to pass if you, if you, if us. He's, God's talking to the Israelites there. And here's what I know. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, here's the wonderful thing. God grafts us in along with the people of Israel. I'm a child of the king. Not only do those guys get blessings when they do what's right, you and I get blessings. And he says, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you, and they shall overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Man. So if you'll do these things, if you'll obey, these are the blessings that will come. And here's what I love about it. The blessing chapter, it actually begins with a condition of obedience. This blessing chapter also ends with the same condition. So obedience is absolutely huge that we do what God's called us to do. And then in verse 9, we're going to skip down to verse 9. It says, the Lord will establish you. As a holy people to himself, man, that sounds good. He'll establish us as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to us, if we keep the commandments of the Lord our God and if we walk in his ways. Do you want to keep the commandments of God? That would be a wise thing to do. If we walk in his ways, do you want to do that? That would be a very wise way to do. Can we do those things with his help? Absolutely. Or God wouldn't have said it. He just wouldn't have said that. If we obey the, the, the commands of the Lord your God, if we walk in his ways, I'm reading it again, the Lord will establish you as his whole pe holy people, as he swore he would do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord and that they will stand in awe of you. Whew. So in all of that, here's what you got to get. Obedience is required for blessing. Obedience is required for blessing. Obedience is is required for blessing. Let me say that again. Obedience is required for blessing. One more time. Obedience is required for blessing. We want to see some amazing things happen in our lives that are above and beyond. You start following God. You start doing the things God wants us to do. You start getting in on his word. You start praying. You start spending time with him. You start doing the things God's called you to do, and you will see amazing things happen in your life. I'm not saying you won't have any trouble. I'm not saying there won't be some tough times, because there are definitely some tough times. And the enemy hates it when we talk about what we're talking about today. The enemy hates it when we pray. The enemy hates it when we praise him. That's why I want us to praise God more. The enemy can't stand it. He can't handle it. He's got to flee. He's got to run. But here's, now here's the other side, though, because we're talking about all the good stuff. Here's the other side. But the disobedience makes you and I vulnerable to much pain. If you continue reading further... And I have in that chapter, and I don't have time this morning to do that, so I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. Pastor's giving you homework. I want you to go read chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I want you to read what I read, and then I want you to go a little bit further and, and look at what happens if you don't obey God. It is scary. It is not a good thing. When I read that chapter, there were so many things. I was like, oh, oh, help me, God. It's like, wow. So we don't want to disobey God. We want to do what he's called us to do, and when we don't obey him, we open ourselves up to, when we just don't do what God wants us to do, we open ourselves up to things that we don't need to have in our lives. So today we're going to, we're going to look a little bit, three books further in the Bible, we're going to look at the book of Ruth and see practical examples of disobedience that led to major disaster and obedience that led to major blessings. I don't know how much you've looked at the book of Ruth. My grandmother's name, y'all have heard me call her Nanny Ma. That's, that's my name for her, Nanny Ma, okay? I know y'all don't have a Nanny Ma. But her name was Ruth. Ruth. And then when you go look at the book of Ruth, I go, hmm, there's some good things about Ruth here. Good stuff. The story of Ruth begins by saying her entire family left their home in Bethlehem of Judah. And I want you to think about these names. Bethlehem Judah of Judah because of a famine, and they went to live in a place called Moab. And I'm not sure they understood everything about the significance of the names of those places. But when you and I are thousands of years later, we're looking at this story and we're getting to see what's going on. There's some significance to those names that were happening. The first thing to understand about the story is that Bethlehem, 
Bethlehem, by the way, when I went to Israel, I did not get to go to Bethlehem. It was a little too dangerous at that time in Bethlehem. And our tour guide said, not going there today. Everybody else wanted to go. We got to see a lot of stuff that most people never get to see. But we, Bethlehem at that time, we couldn't go. It means bread or word. So I'm going to say just bread or word. You can write that down. Judah means praise. Judah means praise. And Moab means comfort. Moab means comfort. They left, get, get this, this family left the word and praise to live in comfort. That's on the hindsight that you and I get to see. They left Bethlehem, the word, and Judah, the praise, to go live in comfort because there was a drought there. And they thought it would be better because they had a temporary problem, which was a famine, because of a drought that was taking place. And they made a permanent move. It might not have been so wise for them to do what they did. How many of us have done the same thing? We've left the word. We've left praise because we'd rather be comfortable in another situation. We'd rather do it our way. We'd rather, we'd rather see things a little bit different, see, see if we can get out of that a little bit quicker. But we can't make a permanent move based on a temporary problem. And sometimes that's what we do, isn't it? We can't walk away from the place that should be our home because we're not comfortable any longer. Because sometimes things get tough, and we need to come back to God and say, God, I want your will. God, I want to obey you. God, I don't want my will. I want your will. I'm telling you, if you start praying his will, his way in your life, things will happen. You will see amazing things happen in your life. When you get serious with God, saying, God, your will, your way, not mine. You work out relationships in my life. You work out finances in my life. You work out marriage in my life. You work out whatever is going on in your life. God, your will, your way. And sometimes, God, listen to this. When you're listening to, you're listening to him and you're listening to his voice, there will be some things sometimes that God says that you need to do that you don't want to give up. Because sometimes we have strongholds in our life that we think we have to have it our way. We say, well, God, you take everything else but this one little deal. You ever done that to God? You take all of this, but I got this one little thing. Listen, have I been there? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we got to come under the submission of God and say, God, I want your will to be done. So what happened after Ruth's family got to Moab? It wasn't very good. They got to, to Moab and everybody started dying in her family. Her father-in-law died. That wasn't a good thing. Her brother-in-law died. And then her husband died. So like they go from drought and famine to now death. And everybody's dying, and Ruth was left living in a foreign country with her mother-in-law, and her name was Naomi. Naomi, you want to remember that name. So I want you to understand this. Disobedience removes the blessing of the Lord. Disobedience removes the blessing of the Lord. And I couldn't help but think of a time when I was little. We used to ride our bikes, and my dad, he was a runner, so he would run. And I don't know how he did it with all the stuff we had, but he, he, would, he would run, and we would ride our bikes, and we would go along the sides of the road, and there was a place not too far from our house called, we called it the Muddy Road because nothing was paved. Tons of people lived there, but everything was muddy. Y'all remember those days? You remember when everything wasn't, everything wasn't paved? So we go down through there. My dad, he had this knack for knowing where the best blackberry picking was. I don't know if you've ever done that or not, but man, you picked the blackberries on the side of the road. It was awesome. And we would carry, I remember on my bike, we'd have these cut out milk gallons where we would put them in there. But then we'd eat them before they got home just about. It was always that way. And so we'd go picking, and Daddy would find a spot, and there were a bunch of briars. And I remember on, on the hillsides, and we'd get off our bikes, and he'd be picking, and Daddy would be picking eating. I remember, Daddy, we're not going to have anything left over. And then if he's eating, I'm going to eat. You know what I'm saying? So we'd just keep eating. And then there were certain places where the briars were, and you had to try to get up through the briars. And I always tried to figure how not to do that. I sort of wore my jeans, and I had shorts on, and I had short sleeves on. And so at a particular area, I'm like, Dad, I want to go over here. You handle the briars. Over here doesn't have any briars. And Dad goes, well, you can try that, but there's some poisonous leaves over there. No, Dad, there's no poisonous leaves. Can't see that. No, 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 no. I said, well, Dad, you go ahead and get cut by the briars, and I'm going to go around this other way, and I'm going to get more because there's more blackberries over here. He said, you go ahead and try that. I'm like, Dad, I'm going to be fine. 
So I had a lot of blackberries, and I'm full, and I got containers of blackberries, and I got on my bike, and we somehow got those things home, and we got home. Listen, I'll tell you, I'm going to give you a little advice. You put a little bit of milk in those blackberries, and you put a little bit of sugar on those blackberries, it makes it even better. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's a boy from the country, okay? I grew up in the country of Pickens, okay? Little, little country. So, so we go home and eat that, and after we're eating some more when we got home, I'm like, Mama, I'm itching a little bit, Mama. Something's going on. I'm itching a little bit. My leg's itching. What am I going to do? And she's like, you, you might want to go get you a shower. I said, I might. So I went and got a shower, and I was itching some more. And pretty soon, I had gotten a whole thing of poison oak, and I'm highly allergic to poison oak. I'm the kind of person that has to have a shot if I get poison oak. I look at it and I get poison oak. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that back then. I do now. It went everywhere. It was everywhere. And I go back to, Daddy told me not to, and I wanted to disobey and have it my way, and what did I get? I got pain. I got pain as a result. And that was not very good at all. Disobedience removes the blessing of the Lord. When we disobey what God's told us to do, we're going to be in trouble. Just like when my earthly father, when I don't obey him, I'm in trouble. My heavenly father, when I don't obey him, I'm in trouble. But the good news is it's never too late to return to where God wants you to be. And if you're here today and you're stuck in a situation and if you feel like you've gone too far and if you feel like there's no way God's ever going to love me and I've messed up too bad, that's wrong. That's a lie from Satan because God loves you and he knows everything about you and that's why he died on the cross and he was rose from the dead so that you could have life and have it the way God intended, so that you could obey him. So you come to him and say, God, I need your help. Will you please help me? Your will, your way. It's never too late to return to where God wants you to be. So what happened with Ruth? What happened with Naomi? They packed up and they went back to their home. Three of them had died. They went back to Bethlehem, Judah, they went back to word and, the pra and praise. And when they arrived, they were very poor, and Ruth had to resort to begging for leftover grain to have enough food to, to survive. I mean, they're poor. They don't have anything. Three of them died. Now we're coming back. Now the field she was begging in belonged to a distant relative of her mother-in-law named Boaz. Boaz, this is really cool because it's neat to look at this whole story and see how God already had things set up. Boaz was a very wealthy man. So let's take a look and see what happens. And I'm going to look at Ruth chapter 3. And we're going to read and we're going we're to talk about it. We're going to read and talk about it. So listen well. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you? So what is Naomi wanting to do? Naomi, this is a way, great way to describe her. Naomi wanted to be a matchmaker. You ever know anybody like that? They wanted to just put people together. Naomi wanted to put people together because she cared about Ruth, and she wanted Ruth to be okay, and we're going to find this man for you. It's pretty cool. My daughter shall not seek security for you that it may be well with you. Verse 2, now Boaz, whose young women you were with, and then she says this, is he not our relative? He's not a relative. He was a relative of her husband. And she's thinking, and here, here's the deal. Back then, if they were relative and the husband had died, there's got to be somebody else. Somebody can be responsible that's a relative. A little bit different thinking here back then, okay, just so you understand. But they were responsible. They were responsible for them. So I'm just trying to give you the, the background so you can understand what's about to happen. So Boaz, whose young, young women you were with, is he not a relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the, fleshing, at the threshing floor. He's basically down at the mill, and he's working, and he's, 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 he's working. Therefore, I want you to wash yourself and anoint yourself, put on your best garment, and go down to the threshing floor. There, in other words, I want you to fix up a little bit. I want, you to, I want you to put some good clothes on. I want you to smell good. You're going to go see this guy. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Don't see him until his stomach's full. Don't you know how that works? You get the guy's stomach's full, and it's going to be a whole lot better. Y'all shaking the heads out there. That's it. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies, and you shall go in, uncover, this is crazy, uncover his feet, and lie down, and he will tell you what you should do. He, she's not telling her. Naomi's not telling Ruth to be promiscuous. She's not saying this is not about a sexual relationship. This is about here's what I'm going to tell you what needs to happen. 
And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. I want you to know there's some obedience happening here with Ruth and Naomi. She's doing what she's supposed to be doing. In fact, if you go back and look at that story, when Naomi told Ruth and, and Orpah to go, to, to go back to the land of Moab, Orpah decided she's going to go on back. Ruth said, uh-uh, where you go, I'm going to go. Where you, I'm, I'm with you. We're going back to Moab. Ruth followed Naomi, and now she's saying to her in verse 5, all that you say to me I will do. There's an obedience thing that's happening here. There's a loyalty thing that's happening here. There's, there's I'm going to help, we're going to take care of each other. All that you say to me I will do. And that's what God wants us to be about. All that you say to me, God, I will do. That's what God's wanting us to do. Verse 6, so she went down to the threshing floor. She did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. Verse 7, and after Boaz had eaten and he had drunk, and his heart, notice this, and his heart was cheerful. And his heart was cheerful. He went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain, and she came softly. She came softly. She uncovered his feet, and she laid down. You know what I think? I think she uncovered his feet, and his feet got cold. <laughs> <laughs> and laid down. And now it happened at midnight that the man was startled. His feet getting cold, he startled, and he turned himself. And there was a woman lying at his feet, and he's like, who are you? I don't know about you, but that would be freaking me out a little bit. That's a little crazy. This woman's going to be lying at my feet. Who are you? So she answered, I am Ruth. Who is that? I am your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a close relative. So she's saying, hey. She's almost, in effect, doing a little proposal to him. Hey, this is your responsibility. I'm here for you're a close relative. The responsibility is yours, Boaz. The responsibility is yours. She did it very humbly. And then he said, blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter. Notice, remember, his belly was full. Remember, he, he, he look at how God set this thing up. Blessed are you, O Lord, my daughter, for you have, not, you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning in that you did not go after Young men, whether they were rich or poor. In other words, you aren't promiscuous. You haven't been doing what's wrong. You've been doing what's right. Verse 11, and now my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are, and I get, you can underline this, all the people in my town, they know, they already know, Ruth, you're a virtuous woman. If that doesn't want to make you be virtuous, if that doesn't want to make you obey, if that doesn't want to make you do what's right, do what's right. When we do what's right, it'll go well with us. When we do what's right, you'll never lose. When you'll do what's right, when you say, God, your will be done, do what's right. You know, sometimes it takes us to get a little, to get a little older. To, you know, it's really just you've been sinking in. As a parent, you might tell your children over and over, do what's right, do what's right. You say do what's right enough, God starts sinking into you. Well, Reggie, why don't you do what's right? Isn't it amazing? There's things in our life that God said, do what's right, I will bless you. Do what's right, I will bless you. But God, I want to hang on to this one thing. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Do what's right, I will bless you. So I'm going to challenge every one of us. Let's do what's right. Let's be virtuous. Now it is true that I am a close relative. However, there is a relative closer than I. He's saying there's another guy. i got to make sure things are right. i got to check this out. Stay this night, and in the morning, it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a close relative for you, Good, then let him do it. In other words, if this guy, if this guy's supposed, he's, he actually has, he's in line before I am to have more responsibility. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you. And as the Lord lives, lie down until the morning. So what's he saying? You just stay right there at the feet. Probably like cover my feet back up, okay? Cover my feet up. So verse 14, so she laid at his feet until morning. She arose before one could recognize another. It's still dark, early in the morning. Then he said, do not let it be known that the woman came. Don't, don't tell anybody. Don't let it be known the woman came to the threshing floor. And also he said, bring the shawl. Here comes the blessing. Bring the shawl that is on you and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six ephahs of barley, and he laid it on her, and then she went into the city. What was happening? She was being blessed. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, is that you, my daughter? <laughs> Naomi, is that you, my daughter? Then she, saw, then she told her all that the men had done for her, and she said, these six ephahs of barley he gave me, for he said to me, do not go empty-handed 
to your mother-in-law. So he's taking care of Naomi. Boaz is smart. Boaz understands. I want you to give something to Naomi too. It's going to be for both of you. I'm going to load you up. And then she said, sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out. For the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Woo! Can you imagine? Naomi's getting giddy. <laughs> she already knows. She can feel it. She can sense it in her spirit. Something's going to happen. Yeah, we're following God. Yeah, we're back in the land of praise. Yes, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. I've just got a feeling something's going to happen. Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out. For the man, this man, Boaz, Boaz will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Whew. Let that sink in for a minute. And then what happens? After turning to where God wanted them to be, to be, Ruth obeyed everything that Naomi had told her to do. She obeyed it all. The matchmaker had been doing it. And then God overall had his hand on the whole situation. What happened? The very next day, Boaz, y'all ready? Took Ruth as his wife. Man, yeah. We're talking this lady who had nothing. They've lost everybody. They're poor. There's nothing going on. Boaz took Ruth as his wife. And here's what's really cool. They had a son named Obed, and Obed ends up being the great-grandfather of David. In the line of Jesus. Do y'all get that? Here's a lady who did what she was supposed to do, who came back to the land of the word and the land of praise and did what she was supposed to do and followed God and was a virtuous woman and did what was right. And from one day she went from being poor, the next day went from being poor to the wealthiest person in the whole community. Thank you, Jesus. She was begging in a field, and the very next day she owned that field, and she's married to the wealthiest man in town. You tell me that's not my God. And that God that's her God is the same God that's my God, and hopefully he's the same God that is your God. And if you don't know him today, today is the day of salvation. Do not wait till tomorrow or the next day or the next. Today is the day of salvation. Here's what I want you to get. Obedience will take you from begging to blessing. Obedience will take you from begging to blessing. And God blesses us in order to what? Be a blessing to other people. God blesses us in order to be a blessing to other people. Do I have to search after the blessings? No. I want you to hear this real clear. Do I need to search after the blessings? No. I have to search after God. And I have to do what he's called me to do. And you and I have to be obedient to what God's calling us to do. We have to say, God, I want your will and your way. God, I want to follow you. It's not my will. It's not my way. When we follow God and we pursue him, the blessings always follow. Don't pursue the blessings over the blessor. We got to follow God. Obedience takes us from begging to blessing. And the challenge is, are you and I ready to submit and obey what God is calling us to do? Are you and I ready to submit and say, God, I'm going to obey what you're calling me to do? I know there's some things in my life, maybe you're saying this, I know there's some things in my life that I've been hanging on to, but I'm going to release those to you and I'm asking you to help me in those situations because I can't do it on my own. That's a great prayer to pray. You mean it from your heart. Maybe it's in the area of finances. God, I need help in finances. It's one of those things maybe you struggle with. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, God, I'm going to submit to you. I've been trying to do it my way. Now I want to do it your way. Please show me. Ask for wisdom. He says, if you ask for wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. Maybe it's in a relationship. You've been trying to make things happen in a relationship. And God says, but you haven't turned this over to me. What's neat about Naomi and Ruth, they turned it over to God. When we turn things over to God, man, it's amazing. I'm not saying it's all rose-colored. You don't put things on rose-colored glasses. I'm saying you follow God. And in the tough times, he'll be there with you. 
No matter what kind of storms come, he'll be there with you. And the fear tries to attack you, he'll be there with you. We do not have to fear because the what? The name of Jesus overcomes, remember? So I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes, get really serious with whatever God's putting on your heart right now. There may be some things. Just ask God. Say, God, show me if there's any wicked way in me. I want to submit to you. I want to obey you, God, to do the things that you've called me to do. What's God calling you to do? I'm going to pray for you. And then if you want to come down here and pray with me, pray for our nation. We need to pray for our nation. Father, we just want to say thank you for being here with us. Thank you that you love us. We want to seek you first. We know things come when we seek you. We know that things get settled when we seek you. We know that the fear has to go away when we seek you. We do not want to do it on our own. Please help us. With all the different things in life, please help us. God, for the men and women, the, the, the students that may be making decisions right now, I pray we, we completely surrender all to you. Thank you for loving us. There's somebody here right now who would like to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Pray this prayer, mean it from your heart, and turn from your wickedness. Turn from sin and say, God, I need your help. Thank you for loving me. I want you to come in and change me. I have messed up. I have sinned against you. I've been doing my own thing. Please forgive me. Ask God forgiveness. And then you say to God, God, please come in and change me. Make me brand new. Brand new. And you can say, I want to be a Christ follower. I want to follow Jesus. Whatever that means in my life, help me out. You can tell him, thank you for loving you. And then you can say, thank you for saving me. God, we're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to offer ourselves fully to you. Thank you for what you're doing in so many lives today. As we continue to pray, we give you praise in Jesus' name.
is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. in your hands. Our future fear, our future anxiety, our future wins, our future success is in your hands and you call it in. So Lord, thank you for what you've done today. Thank you for who you are to us. Thank you in advance for an incredible week that we've got coming ahead of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. It's been such a great day. Thank you guys for being here with us. We'll see you next week.